described as a muscular, gladiator-like physique, and with eyes that were both intimidating and kind, Alexios Komnenos was a hard-nosed general who swept into power as Byzantine emperor during the summer of 1081. Although he easily took the crown from the former Byzantine emperor Nikiforos III after an intense rebellion, there was a long list of problems he had to deal with, both foreign and domestic. The first minor threats were the rebels who still supported Nikiforos. However, these threats were easily wiped off considering Alexios' knowledge of combat. Other minor threats included the Vikings and the Northmen, though they attempted to remain neutral for the most part and even aided Alexios in future crusades. The biggest threat Alexios had to deal with, however, were the Turkish people of the Seljuk Empire. Already a federation of Turkish tribesmen growing in numbers, the Seljuks conquered the majority of Persia, Syria, and Central Asia. Much like Alexios himself, the Seljuks were cold-blooded warriors led by the Sultan Alp Arslan, who already defeated the Byzantine army in 1071, and known to be one of the greatest war strategists according to Turkish historians. According to Alexios' daughter, Anna Komnena, the Seljuks were almost like winged serpents who pillaged the empire's cities like bloodthirsty beasts, which wasn't far from the truth as, by 1085, the Seljuks have nearly conquered all of Byzantium. Alexios was officially the only hope to save his empire, but he would need to rely on other forces to fight the Seljuks. The first group Alexios made contact with were another tribe of Turks known as the Cumans. Despite the Cumans giving a hostile attitude towards the Byzantines, they still aided Alexios during the Battle of Liver Union. Sorry for mispronouncing that. And, according to Anna, Alexios truly showed his warrior nature by charging into the mists of the enemy and hacking at his immediate adversaries with loud cries, striking fear into those far off. Although Alexios won that battle thanks to the Cumans, there were still other forces he needed to rely on if he wanted to stop the Seljuks once and for all. He requested assistance from other Turkish tribes such as Sultan Malik Shah in Baghdad, along with other Turkish lords in Asia Minor he met along the way. By 1095, however, the Turks were in full control of several major cities in Byzantium, and Alexios could no longer afford to bribe allies to fight for him. With nowhere else to look, Alexios made contact with the West for more help. Thanks to the extra reinforcements such as German Emperor Henry IV, Robert, the Count of Flanders, the Northmen, and the Crusaders, Alexios was finally strong enough to take back Byzantium from the Seljuk Turks. Years would follow with Alexios' crusading career with the Byzantine Seljuk Wars, and he would even aid the Crusaders with their own battles such as in Jerusalem. Alexios was a warrior his whole life, and when becoming emperor, he knew his purpose was to protect his empire from foreign threats such as the Seljuk Turks. Thanks to Alexios and the Crusaders that helped him, Byzantine was saved from future Seljuk rule. Some of the most famous battles during the First Crusade were the Siege of Nicaea and the Battle of Antioch, both led by Prince Bohemund of Taranto, who received aid from Alexios Koninos, Godfrey of Bullion, Raymond IV, and Robert II, Count of Flanders. With nearly 4,000 troops, Bohemund marched through dangerous Seljuk lands. Despite being Alexios' least favorite Latin warrior, he still supported Bohemund's goals and provided additional troops for his crusades. Though still lacking the numbers in his army, Bohemund was far from inexperienced when it came to warfare. He attacked plenty of cities in his life, such as Nicaea, a large city with huge walls punctuated with towers topped with catapults protecting three sides of the city. These defences meant nothing to Bowman, however. Using battering rams, mobile sheds, wooden towers, and catapults, he was able to destroy the city's walls with ease. One witness described the skirmish by saying, the supporters of Christ deployed their forces around the city and attacked valiantly, continuing with the Turks fighting for their lives, put up strong resistance. They fired poisoned arrows so that even those lightly wounded met a horrible death. A few days would pass and the sounds of war cries would still fill the air outside of Nicaea's walls with crusaders and Turks alike 
clashing their steel against each other. Blood was shed on both sides, but the Crusaders were on the verge of defeat as an extra army of Turks sprang through the woods and disoriented the Crusaders without delay. Luckily for the Crusaders, they had one extra trick up their sleeve. Supported by Raymond IV and Bishop Adamar, the Crusaders were able to get the upper hand once again and, by June 1st, the Crusaders marched into Nicaea. Although Alexios at first did not want to take part in the siege, he finally decided to send his own personal armies to assist Poimond into successfully capturing the city. By June 18th, the city finally fell to the Crusaders and slaughtered any remaining Turks that stood in their way. In the end, Nicaea was handed over to Alexios, with Bohemond and his crusaders showered with riches. But this battle was just the beginning of an even bigger conflict.